Work pass holders are here to complement our workforce and grow the economy. In good times, this attracts investments, which in turn creates more jobs for locals. In bad times, like last year, the foreign workforce shrinks and this shields locals from worse job losses. First, we must assure Singaporeans that employment pass and S-pass holders are of the right standard. And a practical and reasonable indication of quality, the standard, is how much the employer is prepared to pay for the work pass holder. And that's why, to qualify for an EP, employment pass, or an S-pass, there are salary cutoffs. And as Singaporean wages rise, we have raised these cutoffs instead. Last year, we raised the cutoffs twice. And for the financial sector, where salaries are higher, we set a higher cutoff. We will continue to tighten the criteria for EP and S passes over time. Not suddenly or sharply, which would hurt businesses, but gradually and progressively. And this will ensure that work pass holders come in where we most need them. And we won't be flooded with more than we can absorb doing jobs for which Singaporeans are qualified and available. Second, we must assure all employees of fair treatment at the workplace. We often hear complaints about financial institutions and IT companies hiring too many foreigners. And indeed, both these sectors have a large share of work pass holders. But there's a reason for this. It's because we are a business hub. The finance and IT companies here perform regional and global functions which require both local and foreign talent and expertise. Plus, finance and IT are rapidly growing sectors where the skills are in short supply, not just in Singapore, but in many countries. So these two sectors, finance and IT, have taken in more foreigners, work pass holders, but the companies in these sectors have also recruited many Singaporeans and groomed the promising ones to take on senior and international positions. Not just in Singapore, all over the region, worldwide. Had we not allowed these companies to import the EPs they needed, they wouldn't have come here and Singaporeans would have had fewer opportunities. For jobs, we've let in a steady inflow of foreign workers into our economy at all levels. And because of that, our economy has thrived and we have full employment. Everybody has a job. All Singaporeans, nearly every Singaporean is working. The unemployment is only about 2.2% overall. But still, I know that Singaporeans worry about competition from foreigners. So, uh, some time ago, I had a dialogue with young people and one polytechnic student asked me this very direct question. He said, you know, you have the S-Pass for people who are one level above the work permits. Why do you set the S-Pass qualifying salary at $1,800? Why did he ask me that question? Because really what he meant was, $1,800 is less than what many poly diploma holders are earning. Poly diploma holders earn more than that. So if you set the level there, you are going to have people who will be earning less than us but competing against us. Why do you let a foreigner compete directly against me? And I understand those feelings. But we need some non-Singaporeans to complement the Singaporeans and to make up our shortfalls. But at the same time, we also realize that it's important that Singaporeans remain the core of our workforce. So we've tightened up on foreigners progressively. We've tightened up the foreign workers' levy. We've tightened up on the dependency ratios. The S-Pass, we've pushed from $1,008 to $2,000. So that's of some help to the poly diploma holders and people who are at that level. And therefore, we have protected Singaporean workers, especially at the lower end. But we also have to be mindful of the impact on companies, especially the local SMEs, because they need the foreign workers the most, and if we squeeze out the foreign workers too drastically, we're going to kill the SMEs. 
So we are helping the SMEs to adjust, grants, tax deductions, all sorts of schemes to help them to upgrade their productivity. And we have to bear that in mind when we settle our policies. At the top end of the workforce, we have to allow in high-quality professionals and entrepreneurs because they grow our businesses here and help Singapore compete internationally. So if you look at our, what we are doing, at the bottom, we are tightening. At the top, we have to be free. In between, we have to make some adjustment. The middle, the lower middle level, foreigners are here, employment pass. Singaporeans are working. They're probably graduates or diploma holders. Not hard up, not unskilled, but not so confident of themselves that they are ready for unrestrained competition. And vulnerable, feeling vulnerable, worried about what may happen. So I think at this middle level, we need to tighten a little bit further. We need to raise the salary requirement for the employment pass holders, tighten up the educational qualifications, make sure they come with real skills valuable to us. And this is something MOM has worked on and will announce details soon. And MOM will also work with uh, tripartite partners so as to develop guidelines for fair employment practices and responsible recruitment practices so that when you have a Singaporean working side by side with a foreigner, they both feel fairly treated and nobody feels that he's at a disadvantage. And this is something which will work together with the unions and the employers.